good morning, good afternoon. How are you guys doing? Good evening. Um, again, <laughs> popping in here because I don't have, my fingers are getting worn out from typing email. So I wanted to jump in here and answer one specific question that I received. I think I received it yesterday on, um, it's from Renzo in Belgium on uh, Clodian, uh, iodized Clodian, the level of I, how iodized the Clodian is versus your silver bath. And this is a super common problem and I've never been able to address it uh, fully. So let me, let me pull up my little thing I just quickly put together. I'm not gonna be too long on here today. I just quickly put together a little piece to show you and try to explain um, what's going on with uh, Renzo's stuff. So let me see if I have this here. And we will get on with it. Yes, I do. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm going to switch those around. Um, actually, yeah. Okay, so let me do this. Let me open this up. And I will share this information with you guys here. Okay. <clears throat> so what we have is, um, is a question about um, everything's going fine, everything's working well, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes problems. Uh, what kind of problems? The kind of problems that are very annoying and very difficult to deal with when you don't know what's happening. So let's do this. This is Renzo from Belgium. Uh, he says he gets over 300 days of cloud and rain there. <laughs> I think he's making a comment about what I talk about Colorado, having over 300 days of sunshine here. So I would have typed this out, but again, my fingers are getting worn out. I spent hours on email and I just, I can't, uh, it's just easier for me to do this for a couple of minutes online. And then everybody can see it and hear it too. This is a very, very common problem. And I bet you, if you're watching this and you are listening to it and you work in wet collodion, you have ran it, you have come across this. You have, you have butted heads with this problem. So Renzo from Belgium says, last night, uh, so last shoot, I was very happy with the contrast and techniques apart from the drying up issue. We talked a little bit about a drying up issue. This is a, uh, you know, these emails go on and they, there's a whole trail of them. But this uh, was specifically um, good because he has a great example I can share with you here. Um, apart from the drying up issue, was planning to really focus on some proper lighting with some reflector panel. So what he's saying, he said, man, I got this stuff squared away. Now I'm going to concentrate on doing my work and I can make photographs. And boom, he runs into this problem. So he said, I had to refill my silver bath, but didn't have any silver nitrate left. So I got the idea to top it off with some leftover silver bath with uh had the right SG or had enough silver. And all of a sudden I went from this to this. I'll show you it here in a second. So let me just recap what's happening here. What Renzo's done, let's say, and I don't know his amount. Uh, yes, I do. I can't remember though. Let's just say for example, for uh, argument's sake, you, he had one liter of silver. Let's say he was down to 700 or 800 milliliters in that one liter. And he wants to top it off. He's getting ready for the shoot. He's resolved his problems. So he goes, he go, he, he takes his uh, freshly uh, silver, his, I guess his already made silver that he hadn't used, the bath that he hadn't used, and he tops it off. He tops his silver bath off that he's been using. He's been running plates through that silver bath, right? He's been iodizing that silver bath every time he puts a plate in there. So he tops it off with some fresh silver. And guess what happens? You, you've seen this a million times, guys. You've seen this a million times. This happens. I see this online so often. It's, it's unbelievable how often I see this. And uh, I, end up, I end up trying to explain what I'm going to explain to you right now. 
over and over and over again. And it's very difficult to write this out, but I'm going to refer, if you have my book, uh, you'll see what I'm going to quote here from it. But if you have my book, you can find it in there. Um, this problem going from the left image to the right image, and all he did was top off his silver bath. What do you think is happening there? What do you think is going on? Well, let's do this. Let's go to this next slide and let me talk a little bit about what's happening in Renzo's photographs. So Renzo's going along and he did, he's got some quick clear. He said he's been using for a while. It's probably in this, uh, in this area high, uh, meet, this is highly iodized on the left, top left. Uh, somewhat iodized, iodized, slightly iodized on down on down the list. Highly iodized and slightly iodized. He's using highly iodized um, salted collodion, meaning what does that mean? Highly iodized. What do you mean, Quinn? I mean that his iodide, his ammonium iodide, his potassium iodide, whatever iodide, that salt he's using in a collodion has started breaking down or ripening and change, turning this from this straw or light color to this darker color, orange, yellow, orange, whatever, whatever color you, you, your eyes perceive there, it's darker, starts breaking down, raises the iodide, the iodides in it. It's highly iodized or becoming highly iodized. So old red collodion is highly, highly iodized. So he's going along, he's making plates, we resolve one problem, he had a corner drawing issue, things, blah, 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 whatever it was. And now he's, his images are looking great. He tops off his silver. So what happens? When you met, you can, it can happen on either side, right? It can either happen to your silver bath or it can happen when you uh, make new collodion. So this illustration that I'm showing you right here is the key, is the key to understanding why these things happen. It's not your developer, in this case, it's not your developer, it's not your uh, light, it's not your lens, it's not your technique, any of that. What happens here is there's a marriage that has to take place. Remember, I talked about this constantly, this double decomposition process. When you pour, pour the collodion, uh, salted collodion on the plate, you put it in the silver bath and that interaction starts happening, changes the NH4I to AGI, changes the um, CDBR, to AGBR, whatever you're using, you know, a, a silver iodide and silver bromide. That's the process that happens when it takes place. Uh, when there, when there's not, when there is not enough iodides in the silver bath. Remember, he just topped it off. When there's not enough iodides in the silver bath. In other words, you're taking a new silver bath and using old or highly iodized collodion, and that's basically what he's doing in this case. You're going to fog or veil. You're going to you probably fog more than likely. Sometimes it's veiling. Some it's, it's it's just a variety. But that mismatch, that plate is going to steal, or that silver bath is going to steal the iodides from the plate. That's why it's flat and looks nasty and doesn't look very good compared to his other nice contrast the image there. Super good example. Thank you, Renzo, for sending this to me. And I hope you're okay with me sharing this. Um, I just, like I said, I just, uh, I, my typing, I, I'm just kind of tired of it right now. So easier for me to do this. Anyway, so there's the balance. You have highly iodized collodion and a new silver bath. His silver bath wasn't really new. All he did was, was top it off, right? That's enough sometimes to do this. But if you were to take an old, uh, let's say the, that middle, top middle salted collodion, that orange bottle, and you, you, you start out, you're making your photographs, no problem, no problem. And then all of a sudden, you, for some reason, you have to switch to a new silver bath, you're going to have the same problem. If you have a, a silver bath, you've been working and working and working, and you run out of that nice orange collodion, you have to make some new stuff. You look down on the bottom row there and you see that yellow or slightly yellow color. That can create the same problems with your old silver bath and new collodion or new collodion and old silver bath, however you're, however you're working that. So the idea here is to match those baths and that I, the, how highly or, or slightly iodized your collodion is. You've got to meet 
that um, parameter, that chemical, um, th that reaction of stealing from the plate, the bath stealing from the plate versus being completely full of iodide. So remember that you don't, it, it'll usually go away within a plate or two, but if it doesn't, you, you, you might have a different issue. But Renzo, that is what's happening. You have basically introduced a new silver bath or a portion thereof. You're using older iodized collodion, high, high, highly iodized collodion, let's say. Any of those three would be considered highly iodized. The bottom one's slightly iodized. So you're introducing a problem there of the, basically it's the double decomposition process, right? It's where we're forming the halides, the light sensitive silver halides on the plate. And that's what happens, it breaks down and starts, uh, you start having problems. So having said that, that is a very, very common problem. I've wanted to do, um, I've wanted to do this for a very long time, um, but just had never had the uh, right opportunity. And such perfect um, examples there, both images. This is what, you know, this can look like overexposure. It can look like all kinds of things, right? It could be uh, not enough restrainer in your developer, but because he set this scenario up for me and I know what he's doing, I know what this is. It's easy to troubleshoot. It's easy to see. And it's a great, great example of um, using that, uh, mixing those two things together. So remember that um, and keep in mind that you don't um, have to always, um, when you start out with fresh collodion and a fresh silver bath, you're married up beautifully and those age and iodize accordingly. When you pull one of those out of the mix, and it's usually, I see this on the other side, which that's why it was unusual for Renzo to, to email me and say, hey, look, I just topped my silver bath off and this is what happened. It can happen both ways, but it's usually people running out of their collodion they've been using and their silver bath has worked with that, putting a new collodion in and <laughs> fog, veil, you know, flat, nasty, lack of contrast. It's a classic sign that that, that silver bath is stealing iodides from the plate, stealing, I say, right? I mean, we there's only so many interesting metaphors you can use here. So anyway, that is what is going on, Renzo. And uh, I hope that answers your question. Drop me another email if you don't. Uh, if that doesn't, I'll send you this link to this video when it posts here. One other thing, a quick reminder, tomorrow, which is Saturday, March 13th, um, at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time here. Um, um, I'm in Colorado in the western United States here. 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time tomorrow. Hopefully, we will have Paul Unks from uh, Mountain Hawk Fine Art Photography and edwardcurtisprince.com coming in the show. It, that's what it'll be all about. And I didn't want to leave Renzo hanging on this question. That's one of the reasons I came in. And I had another one, too. But um, uh, tomorrow, Paul's going to be on. We can ask him questions. We can look at his work, see what he's doing. Uh, John and Colleen Graybill came on a couple of weeks ago with the uh, Descendants Project, Edward Curtis's work. Um, he's the great grandson of Edward Curtis. So they're doing kind of a different thing, although it is similar, but it's, it is different. He has a different uh, project, Colleen do. Paul is working in, he got, um, and he'll, he'll tell you about this tomorrow. He got exclusive access um, to the University of Colorado Denver's library, photographic library, and got to Curtis's, um, uh, a Curtis, they had a bunch of Curtis stuff in there, or volumes of his work. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Little different aspect. Tomorrow probably will be a little more technical. Um, they all, everyone sells prints, but uh, Paul has made it, uh, that's his primary objective. And I think John and Colleen, they do that as well too, but they're more um, concerned with their descendants projects. They're photographing, um, descendants of people that Edward Curtis photographed, uh, Native Americans that Edward Curtis photographed. So uh, you're welcome, Terrence Hounsel. You're very welcome. Um, so the, uh, the end of the, at the end of the day, tomorrow will be a good hour. We're not going to talk anything technical on wet plate, um, I don't think, but it'll be all about, you know, 
photogravures, uh, orotones, uh, Edward Curtis's work, what Paul's doing, that kind of thing. So that is it. I'm going to jump out of here. If you've joined me, if you're watching or listening, thank you so much. And if you do it in the future, that's fine too. I just wanted to jump on and answer that question. I can put it in the tags now and I can direct people to go watch the video rather than me typing out a whole bunch of stuff uh, on email. So thanks guys, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, stay safe and we will see you tomorrow. Ciao.